So far, the adhesion molecules we have discussed mediate cell-cell adhesion. There's another very important category of molecules that mediate adhesion between cells and the extracellular matrix, the integrin molecules. So let's talk about integrin molecules now. The linkage of extracellular matrix to the cell requires transmembrane cell adhesion proteins that act as matrix receptors. They tie the components of extracellular matrix to cell's cytoskeleton. There's another type of integrins which in white blood cells also serve as cell-cell adhesion molecules. Integrins, like other cell adhesion molecules, differ from cell surface receptors for hormones and for other extracellular soluble signaling molecule uh, receptors that they usually bind their ligand with low affinity. The, the, the receptors for the conventional receptors that we have talked about they bind their ligand with a higher affinity uh, as compared to the integrins. They are usually fold in about, they are usually present in about 10 to 100 fold higher concentration on the cell surface. So it's weaker interaction, but the number of receptors, uh, we can refer to integrins as receptors also, since these are transmembrane proteins, as I'll talk about, and they bind an extracellular material. So we can also think of them as receptors and as you go along it will also become clear that not only these integrins bind extracellular molecules they also signal cells uh, we'll see that later but here uh, I'm going to also refer to integrins as uh, cellular receptors if the binding of integrins to ECM was too tight the cells would become irreversibly glued to the matrix and would be unable to move so sometimes you need to move cells. For example, if there's a wounding of uh, a tissue, uh, cells have to migrate and repair the, uh, the tissue that has been damaged. In that case, if the cells are too firmly attached to the extracellular matrix, they will not be able to move. So it is relatively not as tight, as strong of interaction. It is a weaker interaction, but the number of interactions is greater. Uh, you can think of it as a Velcro effect. Uh, you have seen that uh, there is a flap of Velcro. It has these tiny fibers and two Velcro flaps stick together because of those fibers. They can entangle with each other. Individually, the strength of these individual filaments present on the Velcro flap, it is very, very low. Since they're in such a greater number, they can bind things very, very tightly. Like other transmembrane cellular adhesion proteins, however, integrins do more than just attach cells to its surrounding. As I mentioned, that integrins can also provide signals to cells. They activate intracellular signaling pathways that communicate to cell the characteristics of extracellular matrix to which the cell is bound. Here's an integrin molecule. It is composed of two non-covalently associated transmembrane glycoprotein subunits, alpha and beta. So what I mean by that, these are transmembrane uh, proteins, which means that they cross the plasma membrane. Part of their domain is outside the cell. Part of their domain is embedded in the plasma membrane. And part of their domain is present in the cytoplasm. So there are two of them, alpha and beta subunits. These adhesion molecules also are dependent upon positively charged ions. For example, calcium or magnesium, depending upon the type of integrin, they either interact with calcium or magnesium ions. These integrin molecules in different cells, in different cell types, can have different ligand binding specificities. Cell type specific factors can interact with integrins to modulate their binding activity. Uh, what I mean by that is that the same integrin molecules can have different binding affinities. For example, the integrin here shown here uh, on a cell A might like to bind collagen. The same set of molecules on another set might like to bind a different extracellular matrix molecule, for example, uh, fibronectin. So this basically depends. The, the difference here is what is present in the cytoplasm. So the proteins in cytoplasm can interact with the cytoplasmic domains or the tails of these molecules 
and they can modify the function of integrins. We'll talk about that in uh, greater detail uh, later, in one of the later modules. Here I would like to point out that the heads, they're globular. They're projecting more than 25 nanometers outside the cell. Alpha and beta subunits are held together by non-covalent bonds. So we have talked about the different types of bonds that can hold two molecules together. For example, hydrophobic interactions we talked about. Hydrogen, we talked about hydrogen bonding. So these are weak interactions that can hold these two subunits together. Alpha subunit is initially made as, as a single 140 Dalton polypeptide chain, chain, which is then cleaved into one smaller transmembrane domain and one large extracellular domain. So initially alpha subunit is a single protein. It is cleaved here at this location which produces two domains. One is a transmembrane domain and the extracellular domain. These two domains then are hooked to together or joined together by a disulfide bridge, which you can see here. We have talked about disulfide bridges. So this is how the alpha subunit of integrin molecules is held together. Two pieces are held together. The extracellular part of beta subunit contains a single divalent cation Binding site, you can see here, is a single cation binding site, whereas uh, the alpha subunit has four of them. It is thought that basically the alpha subunit is the one which is responsible for, it plays a major role com relatively compared to the beta subunit in binding the extracellular material, whereas the cytoplasmic domain of beta subunit interacts with molecules present in the cytoplasm that regulate the function or the, the affinity or properties of this whole complex, the integrin alpha beta dimer. So basically, we have just uh, had an introduction of integrins. We will talk about how they're regulated and for more features of integrin molecules in the later module.